Hello Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. Right, you are about to see Rob Gitellis, who is the big cheese at Factor Bikes. He doesn't actually own most of it anymore. He is basically a, a CEO of a Chinese owned company. So the Chinese own the bulk of the shares. Gitellis is originally from Miami. I think he's of Italian descent. Um, but he now hides out in Taiwan. He's about five years older than me, so that makes him about 10. And by my map deck pie charting skills, he's worth about $30 million. So not bad for a bloke who made his fortune by churning out bikes that would make garden gates look structurally sound. Now for years, he was making bikes for my old mate, Gerard Vrooman. The same Vrooman who once tried to sue me because I had the audacity to x-ray one of his frames and found a charming 10 centimeter void. Here are those x-rays just in case you think I photoshopped them after a heavy night out. So I used to own a Cervelo myself uh, but it was so full of problems it forced me to start Hambini engineering the business. Now what I thought was actually a, a you know an unlucky one-off turned out to be a fully baked in design philosophy now if in doubt just lower your qa standards until everything passes so let's break this down for the technically curious so behind this crank is the axle and behind that we've got two bottom bracket bearings one in either side of the shell now for these to work correctly you need something called bearing clearance Here's a ball bearing, not the exact one on the bike, but it kind of gets the point across. The outer ring, which is this one, sits fixed to the frame. The inner ring is attached to the crank axle by means of a sliding fit. And the balls do the rolling bit to stop you pedaling like you're grinding coffee beans. There is a tiny gap between the balls and the races, and this is your bearing clearance. Now, if you buy a Cervelo or a Factor bike, Congratulations, because you might have zero clearance right out of the box. To try and explain this with a suitable analogy, let's look at my car. So imagine this, the ground is the inner race, your tire and the wheel are the ball, and the wheel arch is the outer race. Normally, there's a nice gap. That's your clearance, so things don't explode. Now, if you overload the car so badly that the tire smashes into the wheel arch, you've lost all your clearance. Q scraping, smoking, and the smell of your wallet crying. And that's basically what's happening in these bottom brackets. There's no clearance, so that's all crushed together. Now, to be clear, at some point, Cervelo's tolerances were okay, but unbeknown to a lot of people, they changed them at some point, and it was highlighted uh, by a guy called Yordi in one forum somewhere probably about six or seven years ago. Now, what that did was that allowed them to make the pass rate for their frames much lower so they had a lower defect rate. Uh, the unfortunate outcome of that is the punter on the other side who bought the bike wasn't so lucky. So I thought I would, you know, why not have a chat with Rob about this? Now I should warn you, people like him don't exactly queue up to talk to someone uh, with an engineering background like me, who might ask some inconvenient questions. Now, I try to keep it simple and try to avoid getting too technical because I thought he would you know, suss me out and figure out who I was. And as usual, I completely failed. Let's see how that turned out. Right, I was just walking outside of Hall 11. 11, and I ran into this chap whose name is Rob from Factor. Factor. Yes. So. What have you got coming up on your bikes this year, Rob? <laughs> um, well, we have a few unreleased bikes still to, to come out this year, and I think there's already been a fair bit of uh, noise about them. Okay. But can't really say too much more than that. Okay, the, the, I mean, the other thing is, what, what do you think about the quality control in bike manufacture? Um, I think there's some very good and some that, um, you know, are not as good as others. Okay. and then. <laughs> Your, some of your older bikes use the BB right, BB correct standard, yeah? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, do you think a bearing inside that bottom bracket can actually tolerate a 0.1 millimeter tolerance? Mm. 
I think if made correctly, it can, but I think that it presented itself with a lot of challenges. Yeah. Um, and I think that there was too many brands that didn't match the tolerances, which then gave the entire standard a bad reputation. Okay, so do you think the tolerances on BB Correct are acceptable? Well, it's your standard on your bike. <laughs> um, BB Correct was created by Cervelo, um, and I think we're going to just stop here because I don't really like the line of conversation. Okay. Next. Yeah. Fair news. Fair news. So Rob didn't want to talk about that. I think that I, I, now I know who you are, yeah. and I just don't see the point. I think that you are a proper engineer, and you do a great job, yeah. but I don't think attacking the industry is a healthy thing. I'm not attacking the industry. Quite often, Lee, no, yeah. It's just all I've done, I've done it is, I've, you know, taken a, Again. a bike. Uh -huh. this, this, is, then, this is an attack right here. It's not an attack. I've yeah. just taken a bike. Uh -huh. I've, I've gone the tolerance, right. which is 41.88 to 41.96. Mm -hmm. And I've asked you, is that acceptable? Is it an acceptable tolerance? I think it's an industry standard. It's not up to me to make the tolerance. Well, you, do, do you think it will actually work? It does work. How does it work? What do you mean, how does it work? How does it work? It does work. I mean, are you an engineer? I've got an engineering background. Yes, I am. I'm a chemical engineer. Okay. Uh -huh. do, do you really think a again? Tolerance? Again, this is your perspective on a lot of things. This is not my perspective. It, it absolutely is. This is an industry standard. It's an ISO standard. Right. Yes. So then, so I didn't come up with an ISO standard, nor did you. Thanks. Ciao. There we go. There we go. You know, I take it. So where we go and then you know we cause a little bit of conflict that was an attack attack so you can see he framed it like it was a personal or industry attack kind of classic move i suppose and this is exactly where the cycling industry is heading or has already got to it's largely an unregulated swamp and we've had some spectacular cock-ups over the years take shimano for example they got absolutely rinsed in one of my videos and had to replace millions of cranks. They denied any problems for 13 years, only to get caught out by the US authorities, and then they got reamed in public. Then, just a few days ago, there's that comedy show over at Enduro Bearings. The owner implied his bearings were so advanced they were used by Airbus. Mm. Then he claimed, that his 57 Rockwell hardness bearings, which cost $130 each, no less, were just as hard or harder than the $5 no-name bearings from the Far East that were 62 Rockwell hardness. So just for, for you know, map deck mathematicians, 62 is more than 57. And let's not forget Britain's very own aero douchebags who managed to put out a hub with ripples that Jurex will be proud of. The guy who bought it broke the hub, fortunately not his legs, and then he got ghosted for six months until I dropped a video and spoiled their day. And then finally, a word on the media. Not that long ago, GCN put a video out proudly explaining how neutral and impartial they are. Here's that, Jim. Yeah, I think... It's that kind of integrity which sets us apart from some others on YouTube. And while having ads so visible might be construed negatively by some people and some viewers, we're quite proud to play by the rules. Very proud, yeah. in fact. And I got a mention as well. Thing, except perhaps the person making shonky videos in their garage. What they forgot to mention is they got a slap on the wrist from the UK Advertising Standards Authority for sneaking paid promotions disguised as impartial reviews. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to smash that like button. If you didn't, go screw yourself. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.